Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Discussions Giving assistance to people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. This is part one of the Spirit Assistance Discussion Questions from Spirits about Forgiveness and Repentance during which Mary channels spirits who have been present during her discussions with Jesus about God's laws of forgiveness and repentance, who came to Mary during her preparation of a personal feedback discussion for a woman from the USA asking a series of questions via email on the subject. The session was recorded on the 20th of June 2018 from 2 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day everyone, how are you today? Myself and Mary, yesterday and today, we've been discussing uh, Sandra's feedback uh, about forgiveness and repentance. And Sandra had a whole heap of questions about forgiveness and repentance that we've already answered or we've half answered. We'll do our next session in a few weeks time. But uh, this particular session is in response to some spirits that have been surrounding us uh, over the period of time of uh, talking about forgiveness and repentance. And we wanted to help answer their questions as well. So the reason for today, for this particular session, is that we're going to answer the spirits' questions about forgiveness and repentance. There are a variety of different spirits who have who've come to over the period of the discussion to ask questions. And so we won't be handling this like a normal spirit discussion. There'll be a, different groups of spirits coming at different times and uh, we'll answer their specific questions so that uh, and then we may revisit uh, our discussions with them at some point in the future and have more specific discussions with each group of spirits but before we actually proceed i'd just like to remind you that a lot of the information that i'm going to answer with them is is related to the material that we've covered in the discussions about god's laws of forgiveness and repentance Remember, we've done a series of 15 of those discussions over the last year. And unless you've really watched all of those, you may find it difficult to uh, understand some of the answers that I may give these particular spirits who come in this, in this discussion. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy uh, the, the questions they ask and the responses given. And we'll see what happens with, uh, in terms of being able to assist them and help them. Mary is here with me and she's going to do the channeling for me so and she's been just uh, trying to relax a little bit and get herself sorted so that she can do the channeling and mm -hmm. um, before we proceed with it though i'd probably like to just talk a little bit about um how the questions sort of come about because what often happens is mary is uh, often preparing our outlines in the first instance so what happens with our preparation is that mary normally he sits down on the computer, starts typing out the outline and, and starts typing up different questions that come up and, and so forth that she herself has asked. But during that time, she often has spirits come to her and they start uh, asking questions that they want <laughs> to ask as well. And, and quite frequently, a lot of the questions that we put down in an outline are driven by spirits' questions. And, and so what we wanted to do in this case was uh, give those spirits a bit of a voice to ask those questions and have some interaction with them as well. So that's the general background of what's been happening in our discussions and, and in the preparation of those discussions about forgiveness and repentance. And as a result of that, we've come to this place where we think, well, you know, there's so many different groups of spirits around us asking questions about forgiveness and repentance would be good to probably uh, answer their questions more directly. So that's what we've chosen to do today. Introduction to Mauricio, who is a first fear spirit. Hello, sir. G'day, Mauricio. How are you? I'm very well. That's good. Thank you for speak, agreeing to speak with me. Hmm. Maybe, Mauricio, if you could give me a little bit of background about yourself. How long have you been in the spirit world? Do you... uh, not that long. No? No. Just, uh, um, I, well, um, some, uh, 20 years, maybe. Mm -hmm. And what, mm -hmm. what country did you come from when you were on Earth? Italia, Italy. Italy, yep. And, um, like, do you know, so you passed sometime in the 1990s then, obviously? Yes. Yep. And 
how long have you've obviously been listening to us in discussing things about forgiveness and repentance? Yes. What what caused you to come to those discussions? Well, I mean, I feel really that I I'm in quite a good situation. I feel I'm quite a good person, and I feel I was a good man on earth. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I cannot really recall how I came to hear your discussions. Mm -hmm. um, no, I cannot. But but really, the purpose has been. I I I'm I'm very clear what I would like to know. Yep. And that is. And and I can explain a little. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came away from the earth. I, I was ill. I knew that I would die. Yeah. I had cancer in the stomach. Uh, stomach. Uh, stomach. In what area of the stomach specifically? Can yeah. you tell me that? In the stomach. In the stomach. Not the intestines. In the stomach. Right. Where yeah. the food goes. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, and so I knew I would die, but it was certain. Mm -hmm. And so I died. And were you a religious person while you were on it? No, not, no. not particularly, mm -hmm. but I was good. Mm -hmm. I was a good person. I, I was very moral and I did right by my family. I have a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, and it was sad. It was sad to die. It was sad to leave, yeah. uh, but you, I understood it would happen and I made sure that everyone would be okay. Yeah. And I came here. And I came here and things were okay. I I met uh, many people from my family, from my ancestry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I it, it was very good. It was good to meet them. Yeah. And I understood uh, many things about what I did on earth and why I did it. And uh, I understood also some of the things that you have talked about that sometimes we sin and we do not know. Mm -hmm. And then um, I can see I sinned many times uh, in ways I didn't understand. And I can see that sometimes I thought I was doing good and right in my business, for example. And that was maybe not right. Do hmm. you mind me asking what kind of business you had? Uh, it was a traffic, uh, uh, bringing uh, goods into the to the country. So an import uh, business. Import, yeah. yes. Hmm. And uh, so yes, uh, but I suppose I understand that. Uh, well, really, my question is, if somebody has repented for what they did to hurt me, so many of my family and my ancestors, they, they did things. They were foolish or a, a little bit corrupt, a, a little bit dishonest, and, and it, I can see it affected me and it made me do things that were perhaps a little bit the same sometimes. Mm -hmm. it, not dramatic, but a little. Uh, and so when I came to this place, I met many, many uncles, my grandmama, ev everyone I met, and many of them, it seems, have done this repentance. And so I felt a lot better. I felt a lot better about many decisions I made on earth. Mm -hmm. So my question for you is, must I still forgive? I, I, must I still forgive them? They repented towards me. Must I still forgive them? Mm. Because it, it feels, I felt like a burden had lifted when I met them. A burden I didn't know I carried. And I understand now this came from the repentant, repent, repentance that they did. Mm -hmm. hmm. I know that you're struggling to choose English words for, the, for your Italian counterparts, so that's, and that's fine. So we, we, we can explain to our audience whenever you struggle there, if you, if you have a struggle. Uh, you've learnt the language pretty well so far by the scenes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
It's, it's a good question you ask in the sense that if the people who hurt you have repented for what they have done, then do I still need to go through the process of forgiveness? Um, in listening to the discussions about forgiveness and repentance, you would have realized that a lot of the a lot of belief systems which are actually emotional have entered you from your family history. Yes. So in other words, as you correctly stated, you know, grandparents, great grandparents and so forth and parents have all done specific things. And all of those things eventually entered their emotional condition. And, and then when they had children, that emotional condition entered the child without the child even really realizing that that was happening. Yeah, this is very clear. Yes, it, yes. It's a very good thing to know now. Yes, because you can see the chain of events then, can't you? So, right. so the emotion has entered you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, so the emotion exists within what's called your soul. Now, at this stage, um, you have a spirit body that you can see. So you can, the body you can touch and see, that's your spirit body. You notice on Earth now, you've got uh, people that, you know, you're like your children who are still alive, I understand. Yes. And it's sort of like you can see them, but sometimes you can go through their physical body, can't you? Like you can put your hand through their physical body. So, so obviously the physical body is of a denser material than the spirit body, and you understand all that by now, I would have mm -hmm. thought too. And so, but there's the third part of you, which is, which is the actual real you, and that's your soul, and you haven't seen that yet. Right. And you can't actually see it with your spirit body's eyes, just like it's hard to see your physical your spirit body with your physical body's eyes. Does that make sense? Yes. So this part, part of you is called your soul, and you're one half of a soul, actually. Right? Now, that soul contains emotions, and the emotions that were imposed upon you, let's say, at your conception and throughout your life as a child on Earth, those emotions entered your soul. So they're now in your soul. You follow so far? Mm. They are in this, you could call your soul like a contain, the container that is you, the real you, and your spirit body, which you can now touch, is just an appendage of the real you. Mm. Just like your physical body used to be an appendage of the real you, but, but now that it's died, your spirit body is the appendage th that you use. It's the thing you use to express yourself. Okay. So, so firstly, we need to understand that there's three parts to the real you and two of those parts are more physical in nature there's the physical body which which you've used and already discarded then there's the spirit body which is what body is that you're using now but when i say you're using what i mean is your soul uses your physical body your spirit body and your physical body to express itself so your soul is the real you it contains all of your memories and it contains all of your emotional experiences, including the emotions you absorbed from your family history. Mm. That makes sense so far? Mm. Now, if you think about it, this container that is you holds and stores all of these emotions. These emotions, while you're on Earth, caused you to take action and do things. Mm. And they caused you to make decisions and and make choices. And some of those choices, as you've said, were not as good as you believed them to be at the time mm. from the assessment of looking at them now in a more realistic and, and more sort of ethical, moral way. Let's see. And with the help of your family to see those particular things, right? Mm. But your family, your historical family, has gone through a lot of their emotions about what they did that damaged you and they've released a lot of those things already now some of them are in a similar uh, higher spheres than you yes yes so so could you indicate where your grandma is for example in the third nearly four yeah and your uncles are uh, similar similar third or fourth spheres mm. yep it's the third and did they did they have god's help to work through their things or have they done it all by themselves no god yep with God, so they learnt, they, they've learnt to deal with their emotions? Yes, yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not questions you've asked them before, so we'd probably have to ask them directly anyway. But, but 
they've released a lot of the reasons why they, they did some things. Not everything. They haven't released everything yet, but they've released some of those things. Hmm. When they release everything, they'll be able to enter the eighth sphere. So, you know, so there's still the fact that they're in the fourth and they're not yet in the eighth means that there's still things that need to be released. Does that hmm. make sense? Yes. But they're in the process of doing so. So, so they have released some things, but they, are, they have only released the things that are inside of their soul. They are not capable of it releasing stuff that is inside of your soul. Why then did it feel such a difference for me uh, to understand? I, I didn't know myself as a man before. Mm -hmm. And when I came and met them, I, I began to understand myself as a man. I wasn't not only a man independent, I was a man who was influenced. Exactly. And then when I could speak with them yep. about the influence, how their influence affected me, even as a boy, and it affected the man that I grew into. Mm -hmm. Pressure was released from you. Uh, immense, 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 uh, immense pressure, and I felt uh, better. So mm -hmm. should I forgive? Well, I'm still answering that question, so mm. uh, but I want you to understand the dynamics. But did it nothing left from my soul when I met them? No, some things did because at times you had a bit of a cry about what they said, didn't you? Yes. And that that meant that some of those things released from you. Does that make sense? Every time you have a cry, some of those things that they were discussing would have released from you, and then you released that particular thing. So when you had the cry, that's the process of forgiving. Does that ah. make sense? That, that is the process of forgiving them. Ah. Does that make sense? Yes. But the fact that you're still in the first fear means that there's other things that are going on for you. So let's look at what's going on. Firstly, they have not released all of the things they've done to you, but a part of their repentance process is to try to talk to you about what they did to you. Mm. That's why one of the reasons why they've felt impelled to come and speak with you because that's a part of the repentance process, to actually go to a person who you know you've harmed and try to help that person get over the harm that you have perpetrated towards them. Does that make sense? Yes. The second reason why you felt an immense amount of relief is because as they dealt with this issue of repentance, they, they are then forgiven by God for their action. And also they, they do not impress their desires and motivations upon you anymore. See, when you're on earth, you still had a lot of your family spirits and they were a lot of the ones who were not in the state that your uncles and your grandma are in, but rather in a darker state. They were still impressing those same emotions upon you when you're on earth. And now they cannot? Well, because you're in a bit better condition than they are, they are, and they're in a lower condition than you. So if you, have you found your father yet in the spirit world? No. No. So he's in a darker condition than you are, you see. Oh. And because you haven't seen him yet, but he would have been one of the people who were impressing upon you these, oh. in a much more strong way, these same feelings, you see. Does that make sense? So the forgiveness must also be with him. Correct. He's the one who's probably oh. had a large impact upon you. Has your mother passed yet? Your mum has passed too? Uh, no, no. No? So she's still on earth? Yeah. Yeah, so she would be another person who's influenced you a lot as mm. well, um, who has yet to go through the process of forgiveness. But because you're removed from the earth now, it's easier for you to see what she did and what she didn't do. Mm. Whereas when yeah. you were on earth, it was a lot harder for you to properly analyse that. Does that make sense? Mm. And I... Mm, I mm, I see. Uh -huh. I have not looked. I have not thought about the sin of my mother and father. Mm, that's only the sin that these ones of them who came to me to speak about. Mm, that's right. And the reason why you haven't thought about the sins of your mother and father so much is because your mother and father's sins had the more the stronger impact upon you. And there's more pain associated with those particular sins. Mm -mm. So I must forgive them. Well, but did I now forgive the ancestors? 
Well, yes, because you've gone through this feeling of crying and you've had a feeling of release and you feel lighter and brighter and you feel happier. That's all indications that you have gone through some process with your ancestors. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. But not yet with your mother and father. Uh -huh. and, it's and it's going so... to be more difficult with your mother and father because they are yet to be sorry for what they have done. Mm. They, they still believe that what they did was right. And so... And perhaps I do too. And perhaps you do too. It, I do not... I, I cannot... I don't... I, I cannot tell. That's it's right. It's like a... It feels foggy. Yes, yes. Now, um, you, you have, will you listen, have you listened to the section on the conscience that we gave as well? We talked about how you can connect to God and hear basically what God feels about everything. A little. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's possible to do that. And, and it's very, if you can do that, you, you'll find exactly what God feels about what your mum and dad did rather than you judging it by your own standards. And if I make it, my father f repent, will it be better like I was with the ancestors? Sorry, if you make your... If I find my father and tell him what he did, and then he should repent and it will be easy for me then to forgive. Um, I don't think so, no. Um, let me say why. Firstly, finding somebody and trying to force them into repentance is never a good idea. The reason why is you yourself then are breaking one of God's laws about free will and you will actually be sinning. And that's actually going to cause a darkening of your condition. So it's actually, it's actually worse for you if you try to find somebody who you feel has wronged you and then try to force them into repentance than it is for you to go through forgiving them. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to force another person to do something, you are actually breaking some of God's laws. Hmm. So how can I tell? Because it was very easy because the ancestors came to me and they told me and I knew and I felt, yes, okay. And now you tell me I did, for I gave, I gave forgiveness in that time when I, when they told me, I thought maybe it was just them uh, repent, repenting and then I still have to forgive. But you say I forgave. Well, their, their repentance made it easy for you to forgive because yes. they told you what was wrong. And I want that. I know you want that, but that's one of your demands that are actually unloving. You want other people to do the work before you do the work. So you don't want to see what you did wrong. You want to focus on what other people did wrong to you and then try to forgive them. Mm. But a part of the forgiveness process is to actually look at what effect it had on you and the choices you then made. And, and also, uh, that's a different process to the re repentance process, which is what you did to others. And it's, it's actually what you did to others that harm you more than what others did to you. Mm. In other words, that's what's keeping you in the first fear of the spirit world, what you did to others. And this is something that your, you know, your uncles and your grandma have all realized. That's why they are not focused on what other people did to them anymore so much they're focused on what they did to others, do you see? Mm. And that's why they came to you, because they were more self-reflective and they were looking at themselves and mm. what, what they did that was out of harmony with love. When they told, when they told me what mm. they did, I saw I did some things the same and that that was wrong. That's right. And that their influence, their ideas had an effect on you, and I. but you still don't realise some parts of the choices you made. See, their influence had an effect on you, but you still made some choices and you still haven't looked at why you made the choice. Mm. And that's the part of repentance, you see, that needs to be engaged. Why did you make the choice? Mm. What, why, what caused you to engage sin in the same way that your historical family engaged sin? Mm. That, that's the question that's not yet resolved, right? And I do, I do, I do not feel I did much sin. Exactly. On, that, honestly. I, I know, like your very first comments to us were that I was a good man while on earth and you still feel that you were a pretty good man while on earth. Mm. But um, this is something to reflect upon. If you're in the first sphere of the spirit world and there are so, so far discovered 36 spheres in the spirit world, and you're in the very first one of them, mm. and each one of them is a higher gradient of love, 
from God's perspective, then it means if you're in the first sphere, that you're in a fairly low gradient of love from the way God sees things. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So the way you see things, I, I understand the way you're seeing things, that you're seeing things like you, you, you felt you're a pretty good man and compared probably to the average man on earth, you might have been a pretty, pretty good man, right? Mm. But the laws of God are about God's assessment, not about man's assessment. And mm. human's assessment of things is very, very different to God's assessment of things. Does that make sense? See, si. yeah. yes. So while you may consider yourself to be a good man, the key is to find out from God whether you were a good man. <laughs> mm. And it's not in a way of doing it in a way of like being self-punishing or self-attacking or abusing yourself or any of those kind of things, but it's just in a way to be informed so that you know how you can improve your condition of love. Mm. Does that make sense mm. to you? Yes, I, I do not. Yes, it makes perfect sense. Mm. I do not, perhaps, I do not have much shame and perhaps I, I can see already that I do wish for others to... I'm used to directing others mm -hmm. and working out how to do the thing that needs being done, mm -hmm. but... And you obviously have been used on earth to being, a, you were a business owner, weren't you, rather yes. than a worker? Yes. So you are used to directing people rather than doing things yourself. Mm. And there's quite a lot of emotions involved in that where, you know, you would like to have other people to do things for you if you can avoid doing it yourself. Mm. And these are some of the injuries that are within you regarding your demands, which are about repentance rather than forgiveness. Mm. You see? So... So for, uh, forgiveness is only one part of the equation of improvement of your life. Repentance is the larger part of the equation. Mm. And unless you're willing to see what God can tell you about, you know, what, what was done wrong by you specifically, it's going to be hard for you to engage that larger part of the equation. Okay. So, so it's very good that your family has come to you and explained to you what they've done to you. That's very good for them. Mm -hmm. And it's also been good for you because it's helped you see, wow, that, you know, what, what effects that, that their choices and decisions and their feelings had upon you as a child and as an, as an adult. But you've yet to examine your mum and dad's mm damage that they imparted to you, which is by far the greatest amount of damage that any person has, right? And you're also yet to see the process of repentance in a proper light. Mm. So, uh, so, and, the, and the, the other thing that I must mention is that you have a desire to force people to go into repentance to make it easier for you, but that in itself is actually going to make it harder for you because mm. it's against God's law to force people to do things they don't want to do. Mm. You see? Yes. So, so you've got to be careful with this. It's, and this is what normally happens in the first few years of our passing and, uh, you know, usually within the first 50 years of our passing. Most people get some of the family to come and some of those family have progressed. And those, some of those family explain, you know, how they hurt them. And that does help you when you first pass and, you know, and over the period after your passing, initial period after your passing. But then you get to the stage where none of that can really help you anymore because there's personal work to do that unless that's done with your desire and your, your you know, driving force, your will, it's not going to get done. Mm. And, and unless you're willing and desirous of engaging that process, then the law of compensation has to do its work, which is going to just say, eventually over years and years, and I've seen for some people hundreds and sometimes thousands of years it's taken, where they see a list, and, and you're yet to see in front of yourself a list of all the things you've done mm. that you have to be sorry for. Mm. You're yet to see that, right? When would I see it, such a thing? When you choose repentance, when you mm. desire to know is mm. when you'll see it. Does that make sense? See, yes. Yeah. Uh... And it's a pretty hard transition because it's like going from a place where you feel like you've done nothing wrong to, to a place where you, where you realize, wow, the way God sees things, the way I see things is completely different. And, you know, I've done quite a lot wrong. 
and and then to see the list of what you've done wrong you know there's emotions that come up and feelings of guilt and shame and all other sorts of emotions start coming up and that's a pretty hard thing to go through and that's why a lot of people don't even want to do that for years and years and years after their passing mm. Mm. but if you ask your uh, grandma to come to you again if we can do that now yeah <laughs> can she see what she's yet to repent for mm. yes and can you see too that one of the reasons why she came to you is because she realized the effect of some of her decisions had upon the family line and therefore upon you yes so she knew she had to come to you you can see it was driven by her desire mm -hmm. she knew she had to come to you to deal with that based upon her desire mm. she nobody forced her to do it people might have made some suggestions but nobody forced her it was something that she had to decide to do for herself yeah. And how long's grandma been in the spirit world? <laughs> Sixty years. Sixty years. Mm. So three times longer than yourself. Yeah. And it's taken her that time to see some some of the things she's done wrong. Now the question for grandma is does she see everything she's done wrong yet? No. No. Because it becomes refined, you know, as you progress to a new sphere, you see new things. And you go, oh, there was those things I didn't consider that last time. Last time I looked at that, I never considered that. You see? Hmm, I, yes. Hmm. So, okay. I, I'm, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, the process is a lot easier with God, Mauricio, because it's like, if you can do it with God, then God can inform you how God feels about specific things you did, you see. And this is why the conscience is very good. If you, if you can fully connect to what God's telling you the truth through the conscience. And it's really simple to do that, and particularly in the spirit world, because all you've got to do is be open to your feelings and then ask God, how did, how did, how did I treat my, uh, example, how did I treat my wife? Mm. And yet so feel God's feelings about how you treated your wife. Does that make sense? Yes. And God will give you God's feelings about how you treated your wife, and then you'll know what God's feelings mm. are about what is right with regards to the treatment. Mm. And then you'll have a choice. You can say, oh, do I want to repent for that? Do I want to go through the feelings about that? Or am I going to resist that? And we'll, we'll just deal with that later. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, I need to make changes. I do not... Uh, uh, Honestly, I feel I it's not of great concern to me at now. The other people, other people. <laughs> and I can see this I must change. Mm. Mm. And you, if you just think about it for a minute logically, you can see that the person you can change the most rapidly is yourself. Mm. You, you, you know, you're the one who has control over how fast you change. But to change somebody else is pretty hard see, yes. because, because you might say things to them and might want them to do certain changes, but it's only when they want to that they're going to do it. Mm. And this applies to your dad. Mm. Like, it's only when he wants to do it that he's going to do it. And there's very little you can say to him, right? And if he, if he doesn't want to change, there's very little you can say to him that's going to make him change. Mm. When he wants to change, now you can help him. So this is one reason why some of your family, your familiar, have come to you. Because they know that you wanted to change certain things. Mm -hmm. And so they could come to you and say, look, this is how we influenced you and what you did here. Mm -hmm. And then you could have a bit of a cry about that and release that and see some things, right? But there's a whole area of life that you don't want to see I know. I and, see this from our discussion now. Yeah. I, there are many things and that that's I going do to be the, to the stuff that's a bit harder to deal with, mm. right? Because okay. usually, usually we don't want to see things that are more like hurtful emotionally. You know, usually the things that we feel more pain about are the things that generally we don't want to feel as much about, mm. right? And so often they, uh, they take longer to actually access than things that are easier to look at. Mm.
And it's easy to look at what other people have done to us, but it's mm. a bit more difficult for us to look at what we've done to others. Mm. And it's also difficult to look at what the people in my personal life have done to me compared to the, what people generally have done. So in other words, if you had a, like you had a business partner and he did something wrong to you, it's easier to see that than it is to see that your mother did something wrong with you. Mm. Do you see? Yes. Because we have investments, emotional investments in maintaining the relationship with our friends and our family and our wife and our children. And these particular relationships, often we don't see things in them for, for some time. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Make sense? Yes. Have I, have I answered your question yes. well enough? Yes. So don't forget to involve God in that process. Mm. He can be very helpful, but of course, you're not going to want to do that until you get to the stage where you do want to, right? <laughs> so I just yes. encourage you to want to do that. Yeah. Thank you. It's lovely talking to you. lost a lot of interest when you sort of started talking about repentance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and this is what I find frequently is people lose interest in the discussion about forgiveness and repentance when they're talking about repentance. Yeah. Because repentance involves you looking at your actions, mm. whereas forgiveness involves you looking at other people's actions. Yeah. And looking at other people's actions is a lot easier than looking at your own. <laughs> yeah. I appreciated about him that he wasn't... He was honest about he it. He was very... It, honest about himself he, mm. he perhaps he, he doesn't really feel that he's i guess he doesn't want to feel that he's done anything wrong and he just doesn't yeah. feel that he's done anything wrong no, he, he's exactly like the average person on the planet yeah uh, he doesn't feel he's done anything wrong majorly yeah there may be a few minor things here yeah. and there yeah. uh, doesn't feel like mum and dad have done much wrong you know they're, they're mm -hmm. good as they could be doesn't feel like, you know, he's a very unloving it's, person. It's funny, isn't it, that the way that he can see that, the, the you know, um, his relatives coming to him and acknowledging the harm they did, how much better he felt immediately through that process, but he's not interested really in... But the, see, most of us are a bit self-absorbed in that yeah. we're happy to feel better ourselves, but yeah. we're not happy to go through pain so that other people can feel better. <laughs> Or realise that we'll feel better when we go through that. True, yeah, but, yeah. but usually we're not even prepared to go through pain so that other people can feel yeah, better. Absolutely. You know, we're not prepared yeah. to do that. Yeah. So, and generally we're also not prepared to go through pain just so that we can feel better. Yeah. So, so, so of course we're not going to be doing it so that other people can. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, the average person in the first sphere where he is is sort of in the middle of the first sphere. and. Mm. The average person in the, that place in the middle of the first sphere basically feels like the average person on earth does. Yeah. <laughs> which is the reason why they are where they are. Yep. <laughs> Introduction to Christina, who is a fir first sphere spirit who's fluctuating between the first sphere and the second sphere. Hello, thank you for having me. G'day, Christina. How are you? Not too bad. Mm -hmm. I have some questions for you. Mm -hmm. Life in the second sphere is nice, huh? <laughs> when I can when maintain you can get it, there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I feel very fortunate that to have uh, come as far as I have mm. uh, in the relatively short amount of time. I understand mm. uh, that I've been here. My. Can I ask Christina just a little bit of background first before you ask a question? Sure. You were alive on Earth in the 50s? Yes. Yeah. I, well, I passed. I was born around the turn of the century. Yeah. Yes. And you passed and in your 50s, obviously. Yes. Yeah. In the 1950s. In the 1950s, yes. in your 50s. <laughs> well, in my 60s. In your early 60s. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And, and where did you live on Earth? It's... I lived in New Zealand. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. And your neighbour of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, what did you pass from? I, well, I, for a long time they didn't really understand. It was just like I was sort of sick all the time. Right. Um, and uh, sort of like a, a heavy feeling in my chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually it was pneumonia that mm. I died from. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And you, you understand now what that what the cause of that was? 
Well, some sadness yeah. that I was mm. uh, not, that I didn't. Sort of a desire to want to die from your sadness, mm. isn't it? It's mm. a very strong feeling mm. of sadness. Yeah. So, so my questions uh, really relate to how one may develop a desire for repentance. Mm. When I first came here, as you mentioned, I had some sadness to express that I hadn't expressed. That did relate to uh, some the death of my brother when I was a small child, mm -hmm. and then some strained relationship that I had with my father mm -hmm. uh, until his death. And so I feel that perhaps having listened to your discussions, I dealt with some uh, forgiveness in that process of mm. when I came over. Mm -hmm. But now I feel that I'm quite um, well stagnant really. And I, I wonder, I, I don't feel that I have a strong desire to repent. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, how does one develop such a desire? Yeah, well, it's a very interesting question. So the real question is what motivates a person to truly repent? What motivates you to go through the process, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Um, have you decided to have a relationship with God at this point, or have you mostly been doing this work by yourself? By myself, with assistance from many others here. Of course, yes. yes. And have you not considered God in the process, or, or is it just something you haven't thought about very much? Well... I, I suppose I haven't considered God very much. I, I don't have strong feelings about God in, in any direction. Mm -hmm. I don't feel adverse to God, but then again, I don't really feel... Um, I, I was never particularly religious on earth, mm -hmm. and I know there are ones here who, who feel very strongly that... Uh, about God, I suppose, and God as our creator, and... I suppose I feel that, well, if God exists, this is, this is a lovely place and mm -hmm. I'm grateful, but I don't have any strong desire to know this God particularly well. Mm. Can you see um, when you were in the first sphere, so when you first passed, you would have been in the first sphere of the spirit world? Yes, and, yeah. and I am there now speaking to you from the higher places in the first in the sphere. First sphere yeah. And it is only occasionally I, I'm able to tolerate being in the second sphere. Yeah, and a lot of times it's with friends. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so they've taken you there and mm -hmm. enjoyed some of the time there, so you get a feel for the place, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is a loving provision, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so, um, so should we say then that when you're in the lower realms of the first sphere, did you consider that the second sphere was ever a thing that was a possibility? Well, not particularly, especially when I first passed. I, um, of course, that there was so much going on mm. in that process of grief. Family coming and people talking to you. And, and the grief at leaving uh, yeah, my children, children on earth, earth. And, and my other, my community mm. on earth. And so I didn't think much of it. And then I began to make some changes. And it seemed that changes happened reasonably, I understand now, reasonably rapidly for mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I did learn about the possibility then, because I was, I was a little curious about that about how life may be undertaken here. Mm. And so after I made some changes, I made some inquiries and I found that, yes, it is possible that there is a second sphere mm -hmm. um, and, and beyond that, I understand. Mm. Uh, and so I don't feel particularly driven, but I am interested in the betterment of, of, of my life, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you can see, though, I suppose what I'm trying to get at is that when you're in the first sphere, when you first arrived, you had a whole heap of feelings and pressures, shall we call them, in your life going on. Mm -hmm. And that sort of didn't, that caused you to not even contemplate that a second sphere that's really much more beautiful than where you were even probably existed at that time. Yes, that's right. Um, it's only now by sort of reaching the second sphere 
that you can see the benefits of being in the second sphere, <laughs> can't you? Mm, yeah. Yes, yes. And obviously, if there's a second sphere, then there's likely a third and there's likely a fourth and so forth. And obviously, each one of those spheres is a better place, like a, a more happier place, a more beautiful place, a lovelier location with better friends, yes. people who are more loving, uh, are a part of your surroundings and so forth. Yes. Okay. So, so what is going to, the question really becomes, what is going to motivate you to passionately deal with whatever you need to deal with to reach the next condition of, of um, happiness? Can you see, you sort of need to have a desire for your own happiness in order to reach the next condition of happiness. Hmm. Well, I mean, I feel, uh, I feel pretty happy now. <laughs> yeah, but it's only relative to the terrible unhappiness you had while you're on Earth. Yes, I suppose so. Can you see yes. that? Yeah. And when, I, when I'm talking to you, I can feel there's still a lot of sadness in you. Mm. But it's sadness because you're, so, because you're in such a happier place than you used to be, you don't realise that there's still a lot of sadness inside of you. So is it repentance that's holding me back then or is it just sadness? Well, what I'm getting at is there's a combination of things holding you back. The mm. first thing is that you're not yet fully sensitive to your own emotional condition. In other words, not yet fully sensitive primarily to your sadness. Mm. And you're not yet fully realising how much that sadness is impacting upon your desires for your future happiness. Okay. So, so you're relieved that you're in a better place than you were when you're on Earth. Mm -hmm. And this relief is, is usually expresses itself in a form of tiredness and lethargy. So what happens is when you pass and you've gone through some hard sadness when you're on Earth, and you have certainly had some of that, and enough to feel like you just wanted to die. And this kind of sadness permeate after you pass, you, you sort of get relieved of the circumstances that cause that particular sadness. Mm -hmm. And so there is some instant relief, right? And because you weren't uh, greatly attuned to, you know, committing serious sin when you're on the earth, mm -hmm. and there, there are, you know, no obvious things for you to address about your life on Earth. When I say obvious, what I mean is obvious to you. Well, mm -hmm. I, I feel, well, I think that I can see I did things wrong. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yep. But I don't really know how to start this process that I've heard you discussing in order to repent. To make, I want to make amends for what I did wrong, but I can't seem to get a feeling of how to do it. Yes, and, and this is very much linked to your desire to suppress your emotions still. Mm. You, you still have a quite a strong desire to suppress your emotions because there's still that sadness within you that you're yet to fully feel. Mm. And as a result of this strong desire to suppress your emotion, you're not strongly inclined to release it. So the motivation to release your emotion isn't strong. Mm. Do you follow me? Yes. Now, repentance is an emotional process too. So forgiveness is an emotional process and repentance, both are emotional processes. When we're not uh, allowing ourselves to fully experience our emotions, it is very, very hard for us to connect to a desire to actually go through both of the processes mm. because we're suppressing our emotions still. That makes sense? Mm. So in a lot of ways, you're still attempting to harm yourself by suppressing your emotion. Mm. And to God's, in God's eyes, that is a problem. That's a sin, actually, that you commit against yourself. Mm. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And by suppressing your emotion, you then can't engage a process where you have a passionate desire for a more loving experience or a more happy experience. Mm. So I would say your desire for a more happy experience is, is there, like it's present, but not yet 
compassionate. Mm. So that's one thing that mm -hmm. we need to consider. And you, you think this is what is um, preventing me from repenting, really, for things I can see I did wrong? Yes, it's one of the things. The second thing that's preventing you from repenting is to repent for something, we need to clearly see it. Mm -hmm. And as you've said, you don't clearly see things enough to repent for them. Mm. Some things I feel I see I did wrong. Yes, but, but you're uh, not yet feeling them. No. So, so you might see them, but you're not let allowing yourself to feel them. So that's the first problem. Okay. The first problem is that there's some things that you see, but you're not feeling. Yes. So that's all about the suppression of your emotion. Mm -hmm. The second problem is there's things you can't see. Okay. And how are you going to see them? Now, in the past, what's happened is after you've passed over, in, you've had spirits come through and they helped you by telling you some of the things. Mm. So, so that's one way of discovering, you know, and seeing things. And I have been thinking a lot about my life since I've been listening to you. Yes. I've been thinking a lot about my life and yeah. ways that I, I likely sinned and ways that I'm sure I sinned. Yeah. So that's also good. That means you're expressing a desire to know. Yep. But not yet a desire to, well... well not yet a desire to feel because of the first problem. Mm. So that is my problem. So that is a big problem. Okay. But, but what's going to help you with that first problem is this second thing I would like to mention. Okay. And that is because you're yet to connect to God as a, as a person, as a, as a person who's personally interested in your welfare, mm. and you're yet to experience some of God's love, you still carry with you a lot of the experiences of your parents mm. and particularly your father and this and that you're imposing upon God. So, so what's happening is because of some emotional injuries that you incurred during your life on earth, you would rather believe that there is no God or at least believe that that God is not personally interested in your welfare. Because the person who was personally interested in your welfare, your father, was overbearing and controlling. Mm. And, and there's a lot of sadness in you about that. And so you believe God's going to be the same. Mm. And the best way to challenge that is to connect with God and find out whether he's the same. Mm. And that means to go through that experiment of connecting to God that, mm. we've, that you've heard me talk about, right? Yes. And you've seen other spirits do it, haven't you? Sometimes yes. when you've been watching, you've seen other yes. spir spirits do it. So you know what to do there. Yes. And I, I, I think about it sometimes. And I tried once, but I felt very sad. Well, this is the thing. You will feel very sad uh, initially. But if you let yourself cry, and this is about your sensitivity to emotion, if you let yourself cry and have faith in that process, you'll find that God's emotions is so different to your dad's emotions that that's going to make you feel like really sad about your dad. Mm. Do you see, see why you yes. cry? Yes. And, and unless you allow yourself to feel really sad about your dad, which is a part of forgiving your dad, you will not be able to have a better connection with God either. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, because you're yet to experience the connection with God, you don't understand the benefits of having a connection with God. And to my mind, your first question was, what motivates a person to truly repent? In my mind, what motivates me to truly repent is my connection with God, because mm. that brings so much happiness and fulfillment that it drives me to go and do things that might otherwise seem like unwise to do. Mm. So I must... Mm. Now, the third thing that I'd like to mention to you as to what can motivate you to repent is to know what to repent for and be clear about that. Mm. And the way that works for me is that if you connect to God via the conscience, you can ask God for truth about any specific situation. So, mm. like, for example, we can ask God for truth, for God to tell you the truth about how your dad should have treated you. Mm. And that can help you open up to how your dad did treat you. Yeah. And so that can help you see what you need to forgive. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. It can also help you see why your emotions are so closed down. Mm. 
when it comes to repentance, you can also ask God, well, what did I do wrong about with my relationship with my children, for example? Yes. And then God can show you what a good parent would have done there and what, a, you know, what you did. And, compa- and you can compare the two emotionally. Mm. And when you do that, you will be able to go the way through those feelings, you see. But to actually progress, you need to have this fourth thing, which is faith that all of it's going to be for your betterment and, mm. and for your happiness. Does that make sense? And at this stage, you're not convinced about that because of the sadness that exists inside of you from your relationship with your dad. Yeah, I feel very sad now. Yeah, yeah. Now, my suggestion is to ask God what he feels about you and allow yourself to feel that. And then you can see the difference between what he feels about you and what your dad feels about you. See, if you ask God for some of God's love and you're sincere about that and you let yourself feel that, it will trigger some sadness, but also you'll feel pretty happy too because it, there's all these lovely feelings that come from God that show you what he feels about you. And it's what he feels about you is very, very different to what your dad felt about you. It's hard to want anything when I feel so sad. And this is why you're finding it stagnating at the moment. Because every time you don't feel your sadness, but you just sit in it, because that's what you do when you, when you touch this sadness, it's sort of like you sit in it, you know? It's like, sort of like jumping in a bath and you're just sort of soaking in it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So rather than feeling it, letting it through, letting it out of you, you're sort of soaking in it. And, and it's like sitting in a bath rather than pulling the plug out of the bath and letting all the water run out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the difference. One's letting it flow as a feeling. Yes. And the other is just sort of sitting in it and believing it. And so whenever you contemplate your sadness with your dad, all you're doing is sitting in it and feeling it, but you're not actually experiencing it properly. You're not crying about it or releasing it because mm. you feel it's too big. Yes. Yeah. But you see, if you had this connection with God, you wouldn't feel it was so big. Even when I think of connecting with God, I, that's what happened when I tried. I couldn't connect with God. I just felt so sad. Yeah, but that's a lot because of your beliefs about what God's going to be compared to your dad. Mm. You, you think he's going to be the same as your dad. And, okay, thank you. And your dad treated you pretty harshly and, you know, you feel God's going to treat you harshly too. That's why the very first experience you have with God is going to be really good for you. Make sense. So when you let yourself do it properly, it's going to be a good experience for you because you'll then be able to make a comparative difference. You'll see the comparative difference between your dad and God. Mm. And, you, and you'll also feel the difference. If you ask for God's love, you'll feel the difference between your dad's so-called love, which wasn't really love, was it? It was more like demand and bossiness and control, and God's love, which is not like that at all. If you allow yourself to feel some of God's love, then you won't feel the other, you see. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I'd encourage you to do. Would you like someone to help you with that? Because yes, I can ask somebody to come much. and help you. Yeah? Very much. No worries. Well, we'll just organise that. Someone who, we'll organise someone who's, who's had the same kind of sadness at what you've had. Does that sound good? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah? Thank you. Okay. Okay, well, she, she's here now. What's her name? Cynthia. Cynthia, yeah. Okay, so where's Cynthia from? You want to ask some details for Cynthia and tell us what she tells you? Mm. I feel so sad. Yeah. She lived in England. Yeah. And where is she now in the spirit world? The fifth sphere. Yeah, so she's a lot happier now, right? Yeah. <laughs> but she was pretty unhappy when she was living at home, wasn't she? At yeah. Earth. Yeah, similar to you. Yeah. So she Sadness knows. Sadness with her dad, too. Yeah, that's right. So she knows what you need to do. So if you can trust her and trust the help she gives you, that'll help you work through this. But I just would like to encourage you. You can see that there was a period of time for her that she sat in it, too, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. 
It wasn't that, wasn't that good for her either, was it? She felt quite stagnant. Hmm. She'll be able to help you a lot, so I'll, I'll leave you in her capable hands. Thank you yeah. for your help. Yeah, my pleasure.